Now the press continues its narrative that this is all the fault of the GOP. And this despite the fact that, that De Pape gives a statement um, to the police in which he acknowledges that one of his main problems while in this house, San Francisco house is he was super, super sleepy, ladies. He was he wanted to go night-night. So he, he got in there and said he wanted to tie up Paul Pelosi so that he could go night-night as he was tired from having had to carry a backpack in the Pelosi residence. Damn you, Jesse Waters, you mofo. <laughs> <laughs> This is what he said. This is what the suspect said. I was super tired. And he started taking out the twist ties so that he could restrain Paul Pelosi. Um, They wound up going back into the bedroom. While talking with each other, Pelosi went to the bathroom where he grabbed a phone. He felt like Pelosi's actions compelled him to Pape to respond. And he remembered thinking there was no way the police were going to forget about that phone call, but he couldn't leave because much like the American founding fathers with the British, he was fighting against tyranny without the options of surrender, but he did need that nap. So in any event, this is the man that now the entire left-wing press wants us to believe was motivated by GOP rhetoric. I give you, as an example, Gavin Newsom, SOT1. I've seen the dehumanization of Nancy Pelosi. I don't think anyone's been dehumanized like she has consistently. I mean, I watched this one guy, was it Jesse Waters or something on Fox News? What he's been saying about Paul Pelosi the last five, six months? Mocking him consistently? Don't tell me that's not aiding and betting all this. Of course it is. It's look so online, funny. look at the sewage that is online that they amplify on these networks and in social media to dehumanize people like Nancy Pelosi and other political leaders. I know what over the last three years has come in my inbox. <laughs> Trust me, you don't, because I'm not sharing it. I don't even share it with my wife. I got four kids. <laughs> so I know a little bit about this. I mean, it wasn't just a recall against me. <laughs> it was surround sound in every way, shape, or form. This is something's different here. I'm sure you ladies have never been the subject of vitriol from the left, from his side of the aisle. It's just Gavin Newsom and Nancy Pelosi Pelosi wrongly attacked by people like Jesse Waters. By the way, his attacks, according to Gavin Newsom, weren't even on Nancy Pelosi. They were on Paul Pelosi. And the whole FBI and crime file says this was about Nancy. Megan, you mentioned Democrats uh, trying to manufacture an October surprise out of this. And I don't blame Democrats for grasping at straws, given their political position right now. I do blame the media for trying to manufacture an October surprise out of this. And that is exactly what's happening. You know, I don't think there's any figure over the past uh, five or six years who's been more demonized in our politics than Brett Kavanaugh. And when somebody did try to assassinate him. I don't recall the articles that said Kavanaugh assassination attempt follows years of demonizations by Democratic Mm. politicians. I didn't read that in the New York Times. I didn't see Republican politicians uh, on the air giving interviews to Major Garrett blaming Democrats for that. I don't recall uh, surround sound in the media every morning newsletter, you know, blaming Democrats for the attack. Um, You know, I I don't remember that. And by the way, like, I don't think it's true. I don't think it's true that Democrats were to blame for the attack on Kavanaugh. And I don't think it's true that Republicans are to blame for the attack on Pelosi, because this guy, you know, I didn't mean to make light of it by laughing at your description. He's obviously a severe, severely mentally ill, as is the man who attacked Kavanaugh. You know, um, our 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 politics are not to blame for this. Um, we the, the the problem is that these guys are obviously mentally ill. I don't blame Democrats for the the uh, you know purported attempt or the the guy wanting to kill Brett Kavanaugh. I blame I blame the Supreme Court leaker. That's who I blame. That person had no business releasing that thing at a time when the justices weren't prepared, didn't have adequate security at home, and we and weren't ready. There's a reason they announced the decisions in the order that they do. That whoever that person was, Democrat or Republican, we still have no idea. Um, that's the person who I blame for incentivizing this lunatic to go to Brett Kavanaugh's house and the man himself. But I do think in that case it was a little different than this one because you can point to one specific person who endangered the life of a justice by releasing a very controversial decision that was very foreseeable could lead to potential problems for that justice. I mean, that's just the way the country works. This is a different scenario altogether. And, and you know, to, to, to the point Jesse Waters made the, last night and the one I just made, 
Jesse Waters' reporting was on Paul Pelosi and his DUI. I mean, for that, Paul Pelosi has only, only himself to blame. This guy didn't show up there wanting to hurt Paul Pelosi. He showed up there wanting, by his own admission, to, quote, kneecap Nancy Pelosi, and unless she, quote, told the truth. And DePape said she did, he didn't think she'd tell the truth about what we don't know. But he looked forward to seeing her go into Congress in a wheelchair as a way of sending a message to the other non-truth tellers in Congress. He was very upset about Nancy Pelosi, not so upset about his long-term girlfriend and mother of his two children, who uh, was convicted of targeting and stalking a 14-year-old boy whom she reportedly uh, did a long list of negative criminal things to. So in any event, um, here is how the rhetoric has been by the Democrats, okay? The Democrats who now are are pure as the driven snow. They don't understand these nasty comments that the Republicans keep making about Nancy Pelosi. And they certainly have no blood on their hands when it comes to Brett Kavanaugh or Steve Scalise who got shot at the Republican baseball game or anybody, or Lee Zeldin who almost got stabbed or anybody else for that matter. They have no blood on their hands. They're the ones who go the high road when it comes to communication. Here's just a sampling of that, Sot too. Press always asks me, don't I wish I were debating him? No, I wish we were in high school. I could take him behind the gym. No, I said if we were in high school, I'd take him behind the gym and beat the hell out of him. I want to tell you, Gorsuch. I want to tell you, Kavanaugh. You have released the whirlwind, and you will pay the price. MAGA Republicans represent an extremism. MAGA Republicans look at America and see carnage and darkness and despair. We have six extremist justices on the United States Supreme Court. Radical Republicans are charging ahead with their crusade to criminalize health freedom. Illegitimate! MAGA Republicans are to destroying American democracy. Pure as the driven snow. I mean, another thing, so I grew up outside of Waukesha, Wisconsin. We just saw the conclusion of that trial where there's plenty of evidence that Daryl Brooks was perhaps motivated by uh, some sort of ideology that would have been, that would, would be classified far left. And as soon as that emerged about a year ago, after he killed people at a Christmas parade, as soon as that emerged, the story, which had been going like gangbusters on every network, suddenly disappeared to the back background of the media landscape, and there was very little coverage of that trial itself. I agree completely that the mentally ill people are, you cannot blame the, the Democratic Party on the, the, what happened at the congressional baseball game practice. You can't blame people, you can't blame Democrats for what happened to Lee Zeldin. I agree with you, Megan, on uh, blaming the leaker for what happened to, or almost happened to Brett Kavanaugh. But my gosh, the double standard is infuriating and they will never reckon mm -hmm. with it. And in fact, what they do is cover for Democrats. I saw a, a corporate media reporter tweeting out a list um, of all of the attacks on Nancy Pelosi that Republicans have run in advertisements. They do this. They, tr they do the same routine every time someone does something negative to Nancy Pelosi, says something negative to Nancy Pelosi. They act as though Republicans running ideologically opposed to Nancy Pelosi has something to do with this. And it obviously doesn't, but they never do the same thing in the other direction. Um, yes. and, and I think people are starting to pay attention to that. Eliana, they're, they're now, it's like they think people should stand down on the Republican side from attacks, from attack ads in advance of the midterms. They, there was, Chuck Todd was like alarmed that they hadn't pulled ads that bashed Nancy Pelosi saying, you know, we want to fire Nancy Pelosi. They were just like, oh my God, like, how could you not? What do you mean? Nancy Pelosi was not attacked, and her husband was attacked by some lunatic. Like, what are you saying? So the Republicans have to stand down now for the last eight days of this contest because of this, the naked guy who thought he was Jesus for a year? We wrote an editorial about this at the Free Beacon, making exactly that point and citing that, uh, that remark from Chuck Todd, who suggested that there was something untoward about Republicans not having pulled their ads targeted at Nancy Pelosi and others in the media suggesting that there was something beyond the pale um, about Republican ads that used the phrase fire Pelosi. I'm not exa exactly sure um, how there's something beyond the pale about that rhetoric and if so, what it is and what exactly Democrats and the media uh, want Republicans to do in the last week of the election, other than um, sit on the bench, sit on their hands, cry uncle, and cede the last week um, of this 
uh, really important election to Democrats. And Nancy Pelosi, by the way, is fundraising off of this attack. Um, I had an email from her about the attack um, sent to her constituents. And at the bottom of it was a donate button. So you can rest assured that Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats are not going to be uh, seeding the playing field to their Republican opponents in the week in in the final week that we have to go um, before the polls close. There's so much to love about fall, from the cooler temperatures to the changing leaves, even pumpkin spiced everything. What better way to soak up the best of the season than with a Michael Phelps swim spa by Master Spas? A Michael Phelps swim spa combines the benefits of a pool with the therapy of a hot tub. It comes in a variety of sizes to complement almost any yard, even if it's a tiny one. Master Spas worked with Michael Phelps to develop an at-home training and fitness solution that you can use year-round in any season, including winter. As your fall calendar fills up, a Michael Phelps Swim Spa is the perfect place to spend time together as a family. Michael Phelps Swim Spas are 100% made in the USA by Master Spas, the world's largest swim spa manufacturer. It is energy efficient. You can use it all year long. Go to masterspas.com, put in the promo code MK, and that will save you $1,000 on a Michael Phelps swim spa or $500 on a Master Spas hot tub. That's masterspas.com, promo code MK. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.